The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Here is a question that I got recently from, uh, this is from Scott. And, you know, we've all had difficulty learning how to listen to somebody else. And that's his problem. Hi, Dr. Kenner. Megan, a woman I was befriending, gave me a fantastic gift. She told me that I didn't listen to her. And that I don't remember what she tells me, including important things like her recent serious health issues. Megan said that I was self-absorbed, not necessarily self-centered because I'm usually thoughtful and generous, but that my mind, and when I speak, race on a mile a minute, I never seem to direct my attention toward the other person. And... She's exactly right. Despite expressing concern that she thought she was being mean to me, I thanked her for giving me that insight. But I don't know how to learn to listen better. Is there such a thing as a listening mental muscle? And is this different from just having a bad memory? As a 50-year-old, how do I most learn to listen to the other person and remember what they tell me? And are there some books or courses to teach listening? And this is from Scott. And Scott, yes, there are endless books and courses, and there are wonderful resources. You can even go to my website, drkenner.com, and I recommend books. Books from one of my favorite books on learning how to listen is actually a book teaching parents how to listen to their kids, but man, it's the same skills. Though the skills that are taught in that book are the same skills that you need to speak with anyone, and that's how to talk so kids will listen and listen so kids will talk. Or a reworded, how, for me, my my husband's name is Harris. Ellen, how to talk so Harris will listen and listen so Harris will talk. It's ageless. The skills are phenomenal. Also, in the book that I wrote with Dr. Ed Locke, we have a section on communication skills. So there are many, many skills. So let me give you some skills. You're asking, is it a mental muscle or is it bad memory? Notice you mem- you do remember everything about yourself, Scott, because you can talk and talk a mile a minute. You know, you're, that's what you're saying. So you have the capacity to retain information. So if you're learning to, if you want a mental muscle, a listening mental muscle, as you call it, yes, you can have a listening mental muscle. Now, there's no real muscle there. This is metaphorical. But think of it, I... If I learned, wanted to learn how to play guitar or piano or learn a foreign language, what do I most need? I most need, yes, good guidance, but practice over and over and over again. So if you're making this a goal for yourself, how to listen better, then this you make this a fun goal for yourself, number one. And number two, once you say this is something important to me, you can now layer skills on that and it will be much more enjoyable for yourself. So let me give you a few of those skills. Nobody can learn these skills all at once. And you're going to go back to your old behavior many, many, many more times before you do it properly, before you learn how to listen correctly. And you can practice anywhere. You can practice listening if you're just... I don't know, sitting with a stranger on a plane for, you know, a little part of that ride, you can ask them a few questions and you go back to reading your book or using your computer or whatnot. You can, you know, you have many, many opportunities to listen, not just in a relationship with a woman or with friends. So the first thing is... Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. I wish I knew more about what girls want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. So the first thing is ask yourself honestly, are you interested in the person that you're with? Because people are all like books. And some books are 
very boring to me. Some people are very boring. All they do is talk about their aches and pains or trivia, and it drives me batty or a topic that I have no interest in. You know, if they started talking about baseball or football, I'm an oddity, but, you know, I would tune out immediately. So then it looks like I have a very bad memory, but I don't have a bad memory. It's just that I don't value the topic they're talking about, and so I'm not going to retain the information. However, many people have very interesting stories to tell, and they're like a very good book that you're opening up, and you want to move to the next chapter, and you want to move to the next chapter, and yeah, you're thinking your own ideas too, you know, you're you're relating it to your own life, but when we read a book, we don't start talking back to the chapters, we don't start talk, start talking back to the pages about ourselves, we you know, we get engaged with the characters. So if you see people as just an interesting book or a new person that you're um, learning about, then you want to ask yourself, what about this person interests me? For, for example, with Megan, what about her operation? Or are you curious about her job? Or what is it about her childhood that might intrigue you? Or is there a ho- hobby that you both share, maybe traveling? Then set an intention to listen. Tell yourself, I want to travel track, be on her thought track, not my own, her thought path if you want. And uh, then then you start visualizing what she's telling you. So if she tells you she went on a recent trip to Maine and she was with a hiking group and they camped overnight in the mountains and they were woken up by the sound of these scary owls and coyotes, picture yourself being on the mountain <laughs> and what that must feel like and then train yourself to ask follow-up questions and then what happened and then what happened I mean that's the simplest follow-up question and then she will tell more of the story of how it was really a friend that had the soundtrack of owls and coyotes and you know happy ending to that story uh, or whatever you know but it would be an interesting story uh, you can so you can visualize what she's telling you. You learn how to inquire, to draw a person out, to ask follow-up questions, and you do that by, by being genuinely interested in them. And you can notice what you experience because you're changing a habit. Be very good to yourself. You might feel the tendency to jump in with your camping story. You can tell that another time. Now you're practicing how to listen to Megan. And the final point. You don't want to make this into a duty. If you mess up, be so good to yourself and just figure out what you would do differently. And I wish you very happy listening. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner. Many people lack the communication skills needed to maintain a thriving romantic relationship. If you don't communicate effectively, you make yourself less lovable and you undermine romance. What are the signs that someone isn't communicating well? The most obvious is that the person is unwilling to listen or refuses to make any effort to understand you. Some of the most common methods used to avoid dealing with problems in in communication include sarcasm, verbally attacking you and then playing it off as a joke, not being fully focused on you, bossing you around, nagging, screaming, being unjustifiably critical, interrupting you when you speak, using the silent treatment, walking out on you, or being indifferent to you. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.